Ya, yeah, en el cine me falta ese, ¿no? Sí. Y uh, oh, en general también. Bueno, sí. Um, yeah, in the current times there is more and more female fem filmmakers that are, are considered definitely relevant in uh, not also in the genre and the fantastic but also in general but here is a definitely a fantastic festival so if you see if there is some kind of a renovation and and this talent is going to be more and more relevant this i mean this female talent as filmmakers are going to be and they're going to have a stronger voice and i would like to add in the genre yeah <laughs> yeah well um the thing is I think the creativity of the female directors was always there. It's just that it wasn't allowed for women before to have, you know, uh, the possibility to make a movie, uh, especially in the genre, which is very male, yeah. you know, dominated uh, world. And, and, and white, normally. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So, luckily, you know, with evolution of the species, women are more and more, you know, being uh, the, uh, given the chance to express themselves and, and the people who believe them and put the money in their projects. But uh, so it's just, uh, you know, an evolu evolutionary thing. And, um, you know, it's, I think we're still very far, uh, unfortunately, to be equal uh, as directors um, in the genre or not, you know, uh, like, the percentage is so low of women directors compared to male directors. but. Um, what women can do is completely different because it has a, you know we have a different sensibility and a different point of view. So I think it will just take a bit of getting used to not so much from the public. It's more like the investors. The problem is I remember when I directed my first movie and I was 23 years old. Uh, it was the first digital movie in Italy, like. I had to take out a lot of my male energy, which you can hear from my voice, uh, very high testosterone, so I had no problem with that. But to, in order to be respected, I felt like that always I had to, um, uh, in my first movie, after uh, it, I was more confident, but that I uh, always uh, had to make sure to affirm my direction, my power. Otherwise, I felt they would take the chair under my butt and, and uh, take advantage and think, you know, and uh, give ideas or try to, you know, deviate or not take me seriously. I always had this fear. So uh, the first couple of movies, I was a very strict uh, director. Uh, the third one, I let it go. Uh, uh, I was less, more sure of myself. Uh, and less scared that they, they would, you know, try and steal my, my directorial power. The film was in the tall grass, directed by Vincenzo Natali. Vincenzo was actually a very well-known director with many, many films. Uh, some of them uh, won sitches like Cube and all this. But uh, he, was, uh, he was very open, admitting that uh, even uh, a solid career and a solid well-known director like him, he had every time he had to start a new project, it was like he was a new director because it was so difficult to get in financing, it was so difficult to, uh, to just uh, confront these investors, to convince them to invest in the movie, etc., etc. So are you normally in this kind of situation with every new movie, considering that you are already a very well-known and, and, and well-reputed filmmaker? Yeah, man, like, it's a nightmare. Like, if you want to do movies, like, good luck. Like, it's really, really hard to, to make, especially movies that are artistic or out of the, you know, commercial side, you know, the genre or the, you know, auteur or whatever. Uh, it's like, you know, like, if you want an easy life, like, don't do cinema. It's like the most heartbreaking thing to try and find the finance or, you know, an actor tells you no, like it's, it's really, really, you know, you have to really, really want it. You have to be really, I think a director is a person who knows how to live with an obsession for longer than, than normal people. Uh, and uh, you have to be obsessed because otherwise, like obsessed and uh, obstinate. Uh, because otherwise, like, if you better, you know, change your job, do something else, uh, go to work at the post office, or, uh, your life will be much happier. It's not, you know, a happy life. Uh, so I guess some commercial directors really have, a, you know, have it easy 
they have, you know, so some directors I know, you know, they, they don't even, you know, put the camera there, like their assistant director, they, they show up and like, yeah, you know, put the camera there, you know, um, but I never, I always had to fight very, very hard in order to get my movies financed. And I've always made it because, like I said, I'm obstinate, but, but uh, it's always like very, very painful. It's a painful project, uh, process. I can't say, you know, but my father always said like, when people say, oh, we had such a good time when we shot that movie, the movie will be shit. So, <laughs> I believe in that. Okay. Now that you're, you're still obstinated, you're still obsessed, but uh, the new projects that uh, arrive to you, what, what do you think uh, they require for you? What do they have to require? What is mandatory to get your attention from these projects that arrive, that could you get? I was I will say something not very romantic, or, uh, but uh, to this day, I mean, I'm not really interested in being an actress. To be honest, I've made you know I've done it my whole life. Feels repetitive. I don't have any ambition uh, as an actress. So usually, if a movie comes, it has to be interesting. I have to have. I cannot work more than two weeks. Uh, uh, also because of my children, because you know they are the most important thing for me. And uh, how much does they pay? <laughs> Usually I say like where, how long, how much. And uh, to be honest, you know, to be brutally honest, I could say oh it has to be, you know, the artistic or work uh, with a woman. You know, it has to be something of course that moves me. But uh, these three uh, points are really what make me decide to do a movie as an actress. I haven't done it, like in the last years, like really, I, I prefer a theater, to be honest. I like theater, at least I feel like it's work, that it's really acting. In movies, like you show up, and then like uh, all day you wait, and then you do three minutes, and then you go back to the trailer, and, like, I don't feel like I'm doing so much. I don't feel like so much is even um, requested from me just show up on the set. Um, so, and the roles that they offer me are always the same. I play every variation of a prostitute that you can imagine. I play the lesbian prostitute, I play the, the, the go-go dancer a couple of times, prostitute, like I play any variation on this theme. So also this, like I don't know how many more prostitutes, you know, what variations I can give to this uh, one typecast where I put myself into it in my youth. I was like, oh, sh sh yeah, let's get this chick that was not afraid to be naked. But, you know, at my age at this point, it's a bit demeaning. So, yeah, I mean, I, I nothing, you know, I love prostitutes, but uh, uh, I just like, <laughs> I don't think it's the only thing uh, that I can do. Oh, also the sick person, uh, like uh, crazy, uh, sick in the head or sick in the body. And uh, wait, what else? Uh, yeah, a drug addict too, also. <laughs> Don't be a project, and then you, you went to the United States. How was the contrast there in terms of production? And if you were any time tempted to stay there into the Hollywood system? Yeah. Uh, well, I made only one big commercial movie with Triple X, and for a second, and, and then I was living in the States because I wanted to make my second movie, The Heart is Deceitful, there. So I used like the success I had in the States on the cover of Rolling Stones to find the finance of my little one million dollar movie. Uh, and I managed to find it. I was 27 years old, obsessed and obstinate. Uh, so I stayed for that, and then I saw, like, <laughs> the devil like, took me to the mountain and showed me like Hollywood and I was like, hey, do you want everything? And I was like, oh no, <laughs> this is hell. Uh, so, sorry, but for me, like, I, I cannot imagine myself in the meat grinder machine of Hollywood. I think my soul would be deprived and uh, I would maybe die uh, inside. Uh, so, the other movies I made in the States were like with Sofia Coppola or Gus Van Sant, like they were more art movies. And then, so I have lived, you know, when I finished 
my movie, it took a while, two years to put it together and direct it and do the post. And then I went back to Italy because um, the quality of life, yes, and uh, my family, yes, but also the cinema. I, I love European cinema. One of their biggest industries. So these guys have lots of money. They can do whatever they want. Like we can only dream to have this kind of money to make movies. Not in Europe, yeah, no, absolutely yeah. not.